sir should i start no wait wait for two minutes is my voice now audible sir yeah Yes, Renuka. Yes, thank you, thank you, sir. A very good morning to one and all. We are starting with our session today of BSc Semester Two Compulsory English Online Classes, organized by Board of Studies of Languages, RTM Nagpur University, Nagpur. Today's session is on the lesson, the version. by somerset mom and for checking this session we have with us dr manish chakravarti as the resource person of this session let me take this opportunity to introduce dr chakravarti in a in brief dr manish chakravarti is currently working as associate professor of english in st kesimar porwal college county Sir has 20 years of teaching experience at undergraduate as well as postgraduate level. Sir has done his PhD on Indian writing in English, and the topic of his PhD is a critical study of humor and irony in R. K. Narayan's novels, with special reference to Indian and Western humor theories. He has a numerous research papers in prestigious national and international journals. He has published two book books on Indian writing in English. He has delivered regular lectures as invited speaker in the lecture series organized for ISI Accident. at scheduled tribe upsc examination center conducted under the auspices of rtm nagpur university nagpur since the last few years he has been a member of special task force committee and also worked as a member of ahwal committee of rtm nagpur university nagpur he is actively involved in guiding students in preparing for competitive examinations in his own college as well as in the university for today's session i welcome you sir and i am sure that you will be wonderfully uh, delivering this lecture uh, which is uh, indeed a great piece of literature and you are the right person to handle this uh, topic and with these words i hand over the session to dr manish chakravarti and i welcome you once again on behalf of our committee thank you so much renuka ma'am for such an excellent introduction uh, at the outset a, ve a very warm good morning to all the distinguished faculty members and my dear student friends and i wish to put on record my sincere thanks to dr kartik panikar sir 
and the entire organizing committee for uh, for this opportunity which they have presented to me my salutations are also due to the principals to the honorable principals of jam patel college bhandara uh, dharampet mp deo memorial science college nagpur sk porwal college kamti which is my college too and uh, shri shivaji science college nagpur and nabira mahavidyalaya katol for such an excellent collaborative venture so without much ado we will now uh, talk about today's topic that is the varja uh, sir can i start my yeah yeah please please proceed oh okay, thank you sir the varja by uh, william somerset mom okay this lesson is prescribed for bsc sem 2 compulsory english and it is the story of a very simple man who is a varja that is a caretaker of a church he is uh, he has done his duty he has been doing his duty for 16 years when his boss that is the vicar or the chief priest of the church calls him when he comes to know that he does not know how to read and write finally the varja is dismissed but then he does not lose hope he sets up his own business it is a fledgling business in the beginning but then gradually in a span of 10 years he becomes a millionaire he becomes a very wealthy man and he progresses very rapidly in that in his business so the story is about the transformation of the varja okay from being from holding the position of the varja in a church to a successful businessman and this lesson will tell us how he he transforms himself how he overcomes the obstacles okay but before before starting with the lesson let us have some knowledge let us know something about the author william somerset mom next yes yes uh, uh, the author was born in on 25th january 19, 1874 and he passed away in the year 1965 he is a renowned he is a famous english novelist playwright and short story writer uh, and short story writer displaying an in depth understanding of human nature okay he won literary success initially as a playwright but it is his novels and short stories for which somerset mom is now remembered his short stories and novellas are often gems of clever plotting whereas his novels seem at first glance to be more languid and digressive in both instances however the motivating force of his writing is and the source of its brilliance lies in his exquisite characterization his writing style is marked by a careless elegance emotional constraint and admirable transparency and a sharp observer's eye out of this debonair stance mom develops the most evocative portraits of people and places he luxuriates in taking time to explore his protagonists building up a portrait with many layers interwoven through his narratives are is a clash between the traditional and the modern the author lived through a time of extreme social change and he documents this in his writings with a historian's accuracy detailing his characters struggle to make sense of a new strange world while clinging resolutely to what they know of the old it would be all too easy to reduce his protagonists to caricatures of themselves but his craft lies in drawing out beautifully fleshed out compassionately drawn vulnerable and imperfect human beings so much said mom likes to write about the odd about the odd diversity of human characters in fact he traveled the world in search of unique characters 
which would provide inspiration for his novels and short stories. The Verger is more of a character study than anything else. What is true for the hero of the Verger might not necessarily be applicable to others, to everyone. However, the, the, however there are a lot of people like Edward, uh, like, El, sorry, like Albert Edward Foreman, who have little book learning, but plenty of worldly wisdom obtained through looking around at the world around. Somerset Mom's stories are marked by the struggle to stay true to one's ideals and the art in his work is to manage to depict this struggle with such graceful and sympathetic clarity. Next. Yes, now we'll come to, directly to the lesson, The Watcher. It is a simple tale about a simple man who does his duties with great joy and dedication. Yes, he really takes pride in his job. And for 16 years, he has been the proud verger of St. Peter's Church, Neville Square, which is a very upmarket, sophisticated, elitist uh, church where people from high positions frequent. And here we have the themes of appearance, opportunity, dedication, freedom, and of course, humility. In the Verger, the author uh, uh, gives out, uh, displays the themes of uh, appearance, opportunity, and all, and of course, humility. He prefers, he, uh, uh, he prefers to explore the, th the theme of appearance. Uh, the Verger, that is Foreman, prefers to wear his new Verger's gown for special occasions like weddings and funerals. This may be important as mom is suggesting that appearance is important in the scheme of things in this lesson. Similarly, the Vicar seems to think that appearance is important too. Things like being able to read and write and reflects on the good character of a church like St. Peter's. Albert Edward Foreman cannot read and write. And the fact that he's not prepared to learn does not help his cause either. And this goes against what the Vicar thinks is good for the church. As a, represent, as a representative, as a, sorry, as a representative of St. Peter's Church, the Vicar feels that more foreman is not good enough to continue in his job. He does not have the skills that he feels a verger should have. The writer is also exploring the theme of opportunity here. Rather than being downcast about the fact that he has lost his job, Edward, Ed, uh, Albert Edward Foreman turns his loss into an opportunity by deciding to set up business as a tobacconist and a news agent. In a, from defeat, he manages to snatch victory or success, if you, if you may put it. Within 10 years, he, has, he is the owner of 10 shops. This shows the dedication that Albert Edward Foreman has. It is this same dedication that previously made him a successful watcher. Even he, uh, he cannot read and write, of course we know it, but even the watcher appears to be aloof and disconnected from those around him. What the Vicar, consider, what the vicar considers important is not necessarily considered important by others too. Something, it is, this, is, this is noticeable by the fact that Albert Edward resigns from, the position, from his position in the church. Foreman gradually becomes self-sufficient. He has, to, as, he, as we have already uh, seen, that he has bought 10 shops in a span of so many years. From being answerable to others, Foreman has become his own boss, answerable to nobody but himself which is a dramatic change in circumstances for him. And it is uh, probably very important to remember that Albert Edward Foreman has achieved all that he has without being able to read and write. That is a remarkable achievement, of course. Forced to resign and still managing to make a success of life. <clears throat> the fact that Vicar gave, gave Edward Albert uh, an ultimatum which 
he does not follow uh, also gives an indication of the independent streak in the verger in uh, in foreman he does not confirm to what is being told to him by the uh, verger rather he submits his resignation and continues to continues on with the rest of his life he remains undefeated foreman does not allow success to go to his head now we are coming to the theme of humility if anything he remains as humble as he was as a verger where others might use their success to live a dissolute life immoral life but uh, uh, albert always lives a very straight and simple life his humility is noticeable by his reply to the bank manager who uh, who uh, who wonders how uh, how he has uh, made his money even by remaining illiterate and wonders what he could have been if he had known how to read and write so uh, uh, he does not hide his past he does not hide the fact that he is illiterate he tells the bank manager that he would have been the verger of st peter's if he was illiterate okay he has not forgotten from where he has come from and he does not want to change his past it is as though albert edward despite having to resign from the position he enjoyed and he really passionately enjoyed holds no animosity or hatred or dislike towards anybody especially the, the vicar who was instrumental in uh, throwing him out of the of office albert edward is living a successful life whereas others may not do so he shows ingenuity flexibility in his life something that the vicar was unable to do the vicar lives by a set of rigid rules whereas uh, Albert and Albert Edward does not comply with what simply what the boss says, what the boss tells him to do. He makes a success out of his life and remains humble throughout. Now, uh, yes. Next, uh, my dear friends, uh, there are some important terms related to the church and it is imperative it is essential it is very important that you should know the terms which are related to the church before we start because before we formally start because uh, these uh, items these these uh, term, terminology is integral to the lesson and if you don't understand the terms then something it will be a half baked attempt okay now uh, see we in this uh, uh, lesson we come across regular church ceremonies like christianing weddings funerals preaching of sermons etc okay now i'll explain to you uh, you just uh, uh, be attentive enough to uh, you know get the gist of what i am saying first is christianing now what is christianing it is the name given to a baby namkaran as they say in hindi okay so it is a christian ceremony in which a baby is given a name and made a member of the church okay holy water is sprinkled uh, on the baby and it is baptized so that is a ceremony christianing it is an important essential part of of all of all christians okay now as as you uh, verger i told you he's the caretaker of the church he assists the verger he's the main character here we are relating to the verger throughout okay so verger is the caretaker he assists in the various ceremonies which are performed in the church maintenance of furniture ensuring proper dusting okay uh, uh, cleanliness etc albert and plus he is very passionate as we have uh, as i have earlier mentioned he is passionate he is there he is a verger there for 16 years okay and uh, uh, next one would be uh, you see uh, uh, Yes, aisle. That is one uh, term. Uh, term aisle. Aisle would be. You can see the the photograph here, uh, where there are rows of of uh, benches, but the passage in between the rows of chairs that will be the aisle uh, so to facilitate smooth movement. People can come and go, walk. You know, you can go from there to the further end. Okay, that is the aisle, the long passage that is called the aisle. The spelling is A I S L E. But it is not isle. It is aisle. The pronunciation is aisle. Okay. Yes. Now 
cassock. You know, the, the priest, he wears a cassock. That is a long robe, uh, uh, long, uh, what do you call, uh, gown or uh, uh, robe. Okay, uh, full length. It is a full length. Then chancel. Chancel would be the enclosed space where uh, for clergy and other officials. Suppose you go to a religious place. You cannot enter into the, you know, anywhere. There is an enclosed place where the officials of the church or that uh, uh, place of worship, they have it, that place to themselves. It's a small enclosed place. Yes, altar, where the object of worship, where God, where, uh, you know, the, the presiding deity is uh, placed, a place of worship. Okay. In, and uh, it is always raised. It is not at that level, same level. It is raised so that people can pay their respects, can look up to. Okay. So it is a place that is used for prayer, worship, sacrifice, etc. Uh, yes, yes. Then, yes, uh, then another important term, the boss, uh, who is the Vika? The Vika is the chief priest or the presiding uh, priest of the church. He's the boss of the church. If you can uh, if we look, it, uh, look at it that way. There are two Vikars in this story, the earlier one and the present one. Okay. We are more concerned with the present Vika since he is more important for us in the context of this story. Yes, another term would be genuflect. Genuflect would kneel down, kneel down in reverence to God. Suppose you enter a place of worship, you, when you kneel down and obey, uh, sorry, and uh, display your reverence, that is kneeling down is called genuflect. Not kneeling down in a classroom, that is punishment. But here you are kneeling down of your own. Okay, of, due to your respect, your reverence, adoration for the Almighty. Okay, yes, uh, uh, parish and parish parishioners. Parish has nothing to with uh, to do with the capital of France. Okay, it is it is Paris. So here it will be parish and parishioner. Parish actually is a uh, uh, locality that comes within the jurisdiction of a church. Okay, and uh, the locality that the church caters to is. Uh, uh, the parish and the devotees who come to visit the church, who come to worship at the church, is a is the parishioner. I will make you. I will make it more clear. Suppose you stay in Mekosabad, for example, and uh, uh, there is a church in Mekosabad. So the area in and around Mekosabad would be known as the parish. Okay, that is of that church, and the church will uh, will uh, cater to the devotees to the people living in that area. So parishioner would be the devotees who come to visit that particular church. Okay. Uh, interior of a church. Yes, the interior of a church. Altar, I have told you. The place, uh, it is raised where uh, for worship. <coughs> Chancel would be that enclosed place where the people, where the officials of the church will meet. Vestry. Ha, vestry. Vestry is a place, is a room attached to a church where uh, the office records are kept and where the, the, the church people can change into the ceremonial robes. Okay, see, whenever the weddings, funerals and christianings take place, the, they have to change into those ceremonial you know, uniform, the, the church, the priest and those who are with him. Okay, so that is the special room which is attached to a uh, church. Okay. Then outfits are cassock and supply. Yeah, these are the loose garments which are worn by the priest. Okay, uh, long lengthy robes. Next. Yes, now the main characters here. The verger, Albert Edward Foreman, the hero of the short story, who has been working as a verger or caretaker at St. Peter's Church, Neville Square, London. As I told you earlier, it's a very upmarket, sophisticated, okay, polished people visit this church. And the vicar, the present vicar, who has been recently appointed at St. Peter's. Basically, he hails from the east end of London. He has come from a place which is not too sophisticated, which is a big region. He has come from, uh, from that side. He's in his early 40s, a red-faced and energetic man. The church wardens will briefly meet them. Actually, uh, they are helpless uh, in front of the you know, energy of the new vicar. They are the lay officials. 
these are the ordinary officials who look after the secular affairs of the church. Secular affairs would be like uh, maintenance. They know they look after the money collection of money collection. So they look after the non-religious affairs of the church. And bank manager, yes. In the end, we come across a bank manager where foreman uh, uh, deposits his money and he gave a suggestion to him to invest his money in stocks and securities. So these are the characters which we will deal with now. Yes. Next. Yes. Now the story of the budget. Uh, we do not have time to go through each and every line. But I will go through the paragraph. I will explain to you the salient features of each and every paragraph so that you know what we are talking about. Yes. Now, the picture is of we are in Neville Square, Peter, Peter's Church, inside the church. Okay. It is in Peter's Church, which is located in at Neville Square, uh, the uh, MCQs. Okay, which is in this it is situated in the city of London. Yes, and uh, Albert Edward was wearing his gown. Which gown? Uh, Verger's gown. They have a special, some uniform which is given to the Verger. And uh, he kept his new, yes, and he keeps his new, uh, very new ones for weddings and funerals. And for Christianings, he, the, he wears the second best. Okay, now, yes. Uh, uh, and you see, the, 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 the dress of the Vajjar is made up of fleece. It is type of wool, which is derived from an animal, just like we get wool from sheep. Okay. But just see how meticulous he is, the Vajjar, because when he wears his uniform, the creases are very apparent. Like he carefully irons his, his dress. Okay. So, uh, folds are, uh, his, the folds of his gown are stiff, as if. Uh, no, it is made up of perennial bronze. Bronze is a very stiff, you know, a metal. Uh, it's a hard metal. So the crease is also like that. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. And he takes pleasure in, uh, uh, the Virgin takes pleasure in wearing his uniform. He is proud of his job. He loves his job. That is why whenever he wears his uniform, he is, you know, very, uh, uh, he takes great pleasure and pride. Okay. And when he takes off, uh, you know, his uh, the gown, he feels insufficiently clad, as if uh, I'm wearing uh, some clothes. There's some problem with the clothes. It's minimum, you know. So during the 16 years, he had a succession of such gown. Every year he used to get gowns. You know, every year you have a, some uniform. Okay, some new uniform. No, sorry, not new uniform, but you get a new set of gown. Okay, but he has carefully preserved all the gowns which he have received down the years he does not he has not thrown it away he has carefully ironed it okay and all the old old gowns he has kept carefully in his wardrobe okay in the lower drawer drawer of his wardrobe so just see how he is okay he's not he's very uh, meticulous and uh, preserves the things with care okay i don't know uh, <coughs> the verger now he is busy. He is doing some or the other activity in the church. He, he takes away a church, that, a chair, sorry, a chair that was brought for an, a weak lady. Okay. After so she is removed, he removed the chair. Then he saw the vicar. The vicar was genuflecting. The vicar had just kneeled, knelt down. He had paid his reverence and he is now walking off. But, he stood. but now the verger is saying, thinking, why is the vicar, vicar is the boss. Is the chief priest okay? So, uh, foreman is wondering why is he not going away? He's just you know uh, moving about in that vicinity only in the in around uh, the Vajjar. Uh, the Vajjar had been now. Let us know something about the Vajjar. The Vajjar had been recently appointed a red faced, energetic man in his 40s. 40s would be uh, between 40 to 45, around you know, 42 45, somewhere. So so uh, red and energetic man like full of energy full of dynamism full of okay and uh, uh, still regretted his predecessor so but before the present vicar the earlier vicar was remembered very fondly by edward uh, by albert edward foreman why because the earlier 
uh, Vikar was a very gentle man, was a, an old man with silver hair, uh, uh, aged as a bit, uh, he, he was a, uh, a slightly old, older man. And he was a very cool guy where he kept on, he visited, he did not disturb anybody. He did not fuss over anything. First, madam, to make a show about something, to complain, to get anger, to uh, angry, to get annoyed over something. Okay. So he never uh, 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 felt or disturbed about anything. He was, he, you know, liked things as they are. He did not want to change things. Okay. No, this is not, this will not do, this will not do. No, the earlier Vika were very cool, very calm uh, uh, gentlemen. Okay. And uh, uh, he was, he dined out a lot. Yes, he was. He dined out with his parishioner. He always visited the devotees and did not disturb the other people in the church with his all his ideas. Okay, the new vicar had come from the east end, but now the new vicar is totally different from the older one. Okay, because he had come from the east end. Okay, east end. As I told you, he had come from a place where there was not much development. Okay, so um, uh, that is why. There is some, you know, change uh, and there are differences in perception of the new virgin and the old virgin. The older, old one was used to the life in St. Peter's, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Peter's church, but not so the, the younger one, the new one. Okay. The new vicar had and could, couldn't be expected to fall at once with the discreet ways of his fashionable congregation. Yes, congregation would be the religious gathering, the gathering in the church, it would be a congregation. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, thing is that suppose I am I am working in a in a small Kirana store, and suddenly I get a job in a big multinational departmental store where it is where there are a lot of people coming in cars and you know AC completely all air conditioned and everything. So it will take time for me to adjust. Okay. So maybe. The virgin, the new, sorry, the new vicar has come from a backward area, from a lesser developed area. So maybe he will take time. That is what the virgin is thinking. Okay. When the vicar uh, stopped and called for man, suddenly the vicar, he stopped and told, called for man, please, I want to talk to you on, about something. Okay. I have something to say to you. Please come in the vestry. Vestry would be that small, that room attached to the church where office files are kept and they can change into the ceremonial dress you know, as, as we have earlier said, uh, seen. Okay. Foreman, will you come into the vestry for a minute? I have something to say to you. So when the boss calls, there is something, you know, and he's now uh, uh, wondering what would, what exactly the Vikar has in mind, why has he called him? The Vikar and okay, uh, walked up, they walked up to the church together, walked up the church together. <coughs> yes. And uh, the Virgin also praises the Vikar because the Vikar has one good quality. He can, uh, who, he can calm a crying infant just by holding him in the, in, in his arms. Okay, in the crook of his arm, like you, whenever you hold a baby, you have to, uh, you know, make an angle with your arms so that the baby rests comfortably. So uh, it was this new Vikar. He had a gift of, you know, calming down, cooling down uh, the crying babies. And his this talent was much appreciated by the mothers and nurses of the babies. So. If you tell, talk to someone about his good, about his good quality, about his gifts, naturally, you know, you, uh, he's happy. So uh, when uh, Edward, Ed, uh, Albert uh, Foreman, he told while walking down the, uh, the aisle, uh, when uh, he mentioned to the Vikar that, sir, uh, the mothers and nurses, they look at to you with admiration. So, yes, he, he acknowledged, yes, the, his gift. Okay. Uh, it was a matter of subdued pride for him. Yes, the new Vikar had this gift, had this talent. And it was a matter of pride for him too. <coughs> Sorry, the Virgin. Uh, yes, now when they enter the vestry, uh, four men sees that 
there are there 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 is a long refractory table refractory table would be the long narrow table it's a meeting like lot of people can sit in a row it's a long and narrow table okay so two church wardens are already uh, waiting there now church wardens as we have already said uh, that they are the lay officials of the church who look after the secular matters like collection money and all maintenance and all the, all those things so there is some meeting now and he is not aware so albert is albert edward foreman is now uh, a bit what you call wary he is now a bit careful why why has he called and why are these two church wardens already present there means something is being now has to will be disclosed by the boss that is the vajra sorry that is the vika vika is the boss who is the chief priest of the church okay <coughs> yes but these two church church wardens are also feeling very uncomfortable they don't want to harm they don't want to you know do anything which uh, uh, which is detrimental to the vajra okay so they give very uncomfortable smiles you know and they are now let us see what happens why has the vicar why has the boss called the vajra <coughs> so now yes albert uh, he remembered uh, uh, yes uh, on the vicar's face was a look of resolute benignity ben benign uh, benignity sorry benignity why now the vicar he is a very very what do you call uh, uh, he is a direct person he does not uh, stop he does not hide anything okay but resolute he is determined he is now looking very resolute means determined and benignity would be maybe enforced uh, softness here benignity softness but could be here enforced uh, forced uh, softness okay but others bore an expression that was slightly troubled but the other these are simple people these two church wardens so they are very uncomfortable they are not so easy going now they they feel that yes something is coming now now uh, what does the vicar tell the vajra yes now the other day the vicar tells albert edward foreman that the other day a uh, a uh, strange thing has come to my ears as i have heard of a very surprising thing okay and uh, that is that you have no knowledge of reading and writing you are illiterate you don't know how to read and write is it true okay uh <clears throat> so yes he admits the 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 verger admits yes i i did not i do not know reading and writing but i have been working here for 16 years and the earlier vikar also knew it okay but he said that already there is a too great uh, lot of learning too much extra learning uh, in this world okay so and i am do, doing my duty without any problem yes 16 long years have elapsed okay now let us see he was he is telling his own story the verger see he had been uh, as he started his life as a page boy as a male attendant as a servant boy okay in the household of a merchant prince see at the age of 12 at the age of 12 he has uh, he got into service okay uh, as a page boy in the household of a merchant prince he had risen by due degrees he gradually with his hard work he has been rising okay and uh, 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 from the position of fourth to fifth footman for a year he had been single handed butler to a widowed widowed prs butler would be the chief male servant in a aristocrat in a big household and this butler takes care of the all the guests who visit the house he uh, supervises the serving of the meals okay he takes care of all the uh, charge of all the other servants and does any and discharges any other uh, duty which the uh, master of the house gives to him so he was a butler okay and uh, okay uh, and with two things i would two and then uh, uh, he and he had tact firm, firmness and his deportment was exemplary he had an aristocratic bearing he was distinguished looking who the virgin is a very distinguished looking man grave 
uh, tall, lean, spare. A spare would be lean. Okay. And uh, his character was unimpeachable, uh, unquestionable. Okay. Very clear. Okay. Reliable, unquestionable, and trustworthy. And when the Vicar, uh, and when he's uh, replying, he is standing in, not in an obsequious position. Obsequious would be when you, when uh, uh, somebody goes before the boss, he, he adopts a very servile attitude as if, yes, very submissive, you know, whatever you say, sir, whatever, you know, so he does not, he is a very, he keeps his own position. He, he carries himself regally. Okay. And, uh, uh, okay, dignified, respectable person, the Vicar. Yes, to Vikar, when Vikar uh, uh, says that Ari, this is, we have heard of such an astonishing, surprising uh, fact that you do not know how to read and write. Yes, he said, the, uh, he said that the, sir, my uh, earlier boss knows and he said that it makes no difference. Okay. And it's the most amazing thing. But this new Vikar, he is unable to digest this fact about his illiteracy. He says, you mean to say you have been working here for 16 years without knowing how to read and write? Very strange, very sorry, uh, a, a very surprising, astonishing. I went, huh? then he said, Ki, sir, I have, I have uh, joined, I have entered service when I was 12 years of old. And as I have told you, he was a page boy, then attendant, then butler, uh, then, okay, then now, He's the verger of St. Peter's. Okay. But he said, sir, I never had the knack. I never had the flair or the capacity or the desire. Okay. To, uh, or neither did I have the time because uh, I, I joined duty when I was 12 years old. Okay. And, and sir, I have not really found, I have not regretted uh, being illiterate. Like uh, there's nothing, no loss. I have not lost anything. By, by my ignorance, by my uh, lack of knowledge of reading and writing. I think a lot of these young fellows uh, waste a lot of time in reading when they might be doing something useful. Okay. But then the church warden said that, don't you uh, read, don't you want to know the news? And what about when you want to write a letter to somebody? So Varja says, okay, in the newspaper, there are plenty of photographs. By the, seeing the photographs, I can guess the, the story, the news, the news item. Okay. And whenever I want to, uh, there's a letter to be written, I request my wife. She knows, she uh, knows uh, all the letters, all the alphabet. She knows reading and writing. Okay. And she's a scholar too. So then the uh, two church, uh, church wardens, they, are, they give troubled looks. Okay. They exchange troubled looks. And now the, the vicar, the boss, the new boss, he makes his decision. He says, it is impossible to have a verger in this church who cannot read and write. I will not be responsible for any accident, for any uh, untoward incident which happens due to your lamentable ignorance, due to your uh, lack of knowledge, if anything happens. I, we will not take that risk. Okay. <coughs> Albert, now nobody had spoken to him before in this manner. So, Albert Edward Foreman's face reddened. You know, his face became red. Red not with anger, but with embarrassment, with uh, that somebody speaking to him in the, this manner. Nobody had talked to him like this before. Okay. Then he said, Ki, we cannot have a verger like this. So, uh, the Varja says, I respect you. I have a high, uh, cap high, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, regard for your qualities, for your achievements, for your, uh, you know, uh, for all your talents. But I will not tolerate, I will not take the risk of continuing you in office because you do not know how to read and write. And in this St. Peter's church, we cannot afford to have such a Varja. <coughs> But couldn't you learn when the church wardens, they are very soft, they are a bit soft. They tell, they, they urge the verger, please, can you not learn? You, you can pick up the, you know, uh, you can pick up and you can learn the alphabets. Why? What is the problem? Okay. So, uh, but foreman says, 
when i could not develop the skill when i was a child nipper when when i when i was a child there is no scope for me to learn the language the uh, the letters now okay because that time it did not enter my head those uh, the the uh, reading and writing now i don't think and i will not uh, do i will not and there is not much chance of my learning at this stage of my life okay now the vajar says uh, the vikar says he now what you as a judge he pronounces his verdict we cannot you know we have we will give you 3 months we will give you 3 months to learn to read and write okay we don't want to be harsh with you but we will give you 3 months and in this period of 3 months you have to learn uh, reading and writing or else you have to leave the job you have to go edward Ed, uh, albert edward foreman had never liked the new vicar okay he had uh, he in from the beginning he had certain misgivings about him you know when when you see a person you you form a certain opinion of that person so he had never really liked him who albert edward he knew his value and he didn't want anyone to put himself upon yes he had strong feeling of dignity self respect the verger he did not want somebody to put pressure on him to impose his uh, will on him you know to dominate over him to dominate him okay so he also takes his decision he says no i cannot re- i will not i cannot read and write okay uh okay and uh, i have done my duty in whatever uh, uh, what uh, to the best of my abilities so i will not be able to fulfill your requirement in that case the vicar says you have to go okay so okay till you till the new uh, uh, verger is appointed you continue so okay that is uh, that ends the chapter uh, of the th- not this chapter but the chapter of his uh, association with the church okay now after after this uh, incident when he comes out of the church he shows his, his you know he shows as if he is not affected in front of those people but when he comes out of the church then the blow inflicted on him he, uh, takes its toll he is very disturbed okay because he had been working there for 16 years it was as if it is a it was a permanent post like the pope in rome he is there for life for lifetime so similarly he also thought uh, the verger and that is albert edward forman thought that the verger's job was for it was a permanent one and he had uh, you know completely melded completely with uh, uh, molded himself uh, accordingly but then suddenly he is thrown out he is without a job okay of course he has given him one month and but when the this ultimatum is given to him he walks out as if in a stupor in a you know in a daze that now what is to be done he has some savings but those savings will not last as you all know that how things are getting expensive costly you cannot continue just with your uh, living with your uh, saving with your savings okay you have to do something so in that stupor or in that daze he just walks and he takes the wrong path actually he wanted to go home but due to his preoccupation his troubled thoughts intention he takes a different path by mistake and <clears throat> verger does not is uh, he does not drink or smoke normally but sometimes and during this tension he feels an urgent need to to smoke a cigarette okay but while walking on that new road uh, you know he looks around for a shop where he can purchase some cigarettes uh, gold fleck yes the name of the brand is gold fleck but this road is such that there are other shops on either side but no no shop where he can get the the cigarettes suddenly an idea strikes in his mind <coughs> sorry and uh, he took the uh, after taking this turn he then looks up and down the street it's a long street but there is no then suddenly his an idea strikes him he says if i can set up a shop a tobacco shop here so i think that will be an option 
though it will be a get you know a come down from that post of the virgin in that such a big church such a sophisticated such an elite church okay but then there is no option so let me start with some shop where because people those who require a smoke will come to his shop okay so uh, he suddenly this idea strikes him and he starts this shop okay suddenly uh, after some days uh, he finds he discovers another shop and uh, in another street where there are no tobacco shops there so he again uh, he takes he is not purchasing it so he again purchases uh, he again in a different uh, so uh, yes he uh, walks about in a, after some days then in another street he sees that there is no shop so he takes that some a shop a small shop in that street also on rent so now he has two shops okay and he appoints a manager to that shop now he's earning money from both his shops then suddenly subsequently he thinks that when i can open two shops i can also open half a dozen okay so gradually he opens at least 10 shops across a period of 10 years and he earns lots a lot of money he is a you know his fledgling business from one shop it has now become a very big enterprise and he uh, he goes every monday to he makes a round of the shops of all his 10 shops every monday and he collects the money and deposits it in the bank okay yeah. at uh, uh, and uh, all the the money and uh, gradually whatever the money he has deposited in the bank mounts up to 30000 pounds okay so uh, finally one day the manager he he uh, uh, engages him for a time he says sir i want to talk to you the manager he calls him calls him, foreman when he foreman goes to deposit the collections of that week so uh, I wanted to have a talk about a talk to you with you about the money that you have got on deposit with us. Do you know exactly how much money it is? Okay, the manager is asking. Okay, the the virgin, the virgin, he's no longer the virgin now. He has left that position. He asks Albert Edward that do you know how much money you have now is accrued in your account? Uh, not I've got a pretty rough idea. I don't have an exact idea. The, the Albert uh, answers, but maybe yes, I, I, maybe I know something. It's a substantial, maybe a, it's an amount. Uh, apart from whatever you paid this morning, it's a little over thirty thousand pounds. Okay, that's a very large sum to have on deposit. And I should uh, 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 thought you'd do better to invest it. So manager says, "Ki sir, you have thirty thousand pounds." Uh, in your account and we cannot give you in that savings account we cannot give you that that uh, amount of interest okay it would be better if you invest this money in gilt edged securities could be government uh, bonds or you know uh, share stocks where the rate of interest is much higher where the returns are much higher so he's saying sir i cannot be such a huge amount uh, we cannot give you that rate of interest which you rightly deserve. So uh, uh, then the, the, the virgin is a bit puzzled. Okay. Uh, he said, you see, I have nothing to do with stocks and shares and such things. Okay. And I have to leave it all in your hands. Uh, so uh, I will be helpless when you invest in all these, you know, government securities, bonds, shares, stocks. So I will have to depend entirely on you. The managers, uh, he tells the manager. Our manager says we'll do everything okay just you have to sign on the, the the whenever you come next time you have to sign on the transfers but the Albert says now yes the crux the, the ironical thing now but how do I know what I'm signing on okay when he said that okay we'll take your signatures on here so he's saying he how do we know how uh, when what's your questions okay I hope I suppose you can read the manager thinks that Albert Edward is pulling his feet. Okay. He says, Ki, Are, sir, you know, you know how to read and write. Okay. So uh, you know to read. So it, uh, it will be you see and then you sign when you are satisfied, when you are contented, when you are assured. Okay. I could do. Uh, 
gave him a disarming smile. Yes, now we are reaching the climax. Now uh, gives him a disarming, a, a simple smile, charming smile. I don't know how to read. Okay, he is very clear. He is very honest. He does not beat about the bush. Okay, just I know it sounds funny, like, but I just can't read and write, and I only learned to to sign my to do that when I went into business. I can write only my name. And that too, I have, I have learned only when I started my business. Okay. The manager was so surprised that he jumped up from his chair. So astonished, so stunned by this disclosure. Okay. That's the most extraordinary thing I have ever heard. Okay. So just see how the emphasis. The manager has not come across any such case earlier where the person is a millionaire, is a you know very wealthy man, but he does not, through his business, but he does not know how to read and write. You see, yes. Then he also tells him, Ki, I never had the opportunity, so it was too late. So I did not, uh, I could not learn. Okay. The manager stared at him as if he was a, he were a prehistoric mon monster. Prehistoric would be dinosaur, like somebody who has come, who, who does not normally live in this world. Okay. So he stares at the, at Albert Edward Foreman with amazement, with surprise. Okay. Do you mean to say the manager is very intrigued, incredulous? He is saying, okay, we have built up. You mean to say, sir, that you have built up this amazing business and, uh, and uh, uh, amassed a fortune of nearly 30,000 pounds with, with, uh, without being able to read and write? Good God, man, what would have be now? What would you be now if you had been able to? So if you had the ability to read and write, so you could have, maybe the manager is thinking, manager is uh, of the opinion that he could have scaled high, greater heights, more money, more. He could have been, uh, what do you call, a multi-billion, multi-trillionaire, uh, billionaire. Okay. I can tell you, sir, but with a disarming smile, the verger, you know, tells, uh, the, sorry, uh, the verger, that, chap, that episode is over. Now we'll call him foreman. So with a disarming smile, foreman tells him, I will tell you what, okay. If I had known reading and writing, I still be the, I'd be the verger of St. Peter's Church, Neville Square. So this, this is what, uh, you know, a sudden twist, okay. Uh, and uh, uh, if his very illiteracy has led him to become a very wealthy man, though he had the bouts of tension of of, 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 of uh, you know depression when he he was compelled to leave his job okay but he uh, albert edward foreman seized the opportunity okay he he converted obstacles into opportunities okay he did not let life uh, and as you know life is unpredictable there are so many twists and turns in life that we have to be prepared we all have to be prepared to face the the unpredictabilities the you know uh, uh, things which happen without our uh, without our uh, consent okay but it's a very uh, uh, creditable on the part of edward albert uh, foreman to you know to overcome all the uh, the uh, disadvantages or to he has taken he has seized the opportunity he has developed he has taken the risk he has developed and he has become a big man now but he has not uh, he still is humble he has not, uh, you know, become somebody very insolent. He has not become a very arrogant fellow. And he does not hide his past. He does not hide the fact that he has a disadvantage of being illiterate. But he has taken life by the, you know, uh, 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 he has seized life and uh, lived life to the full, fullest. Okay. And uh, uh, that is, it is a lesson for us not to be depressed, not to be disturbed by uh, some disadvantage by some problem which may crop up, which which very likely uh, crops crop. These problems uh, crop up often in our lives. But the thing is that we should not be disturbed. We should, you know, have a cool mind, and we should know. We should find opportunities in whatever, uh, in whatever uh, things the life gives to us. Okay. So I think with this lesson, uh, uh, the 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 uh, today's lecture. Uh, is uh, more or less, you know, I have tried to do justice and uh, 
the thing is that you have to go through the lesson uh, the the christian terminology which i have told you earlier just have to go through so that you don't you are not puzzled anymore before the, what is this what is this you just have to study you have to make a uh, effort to study see for albert edward has made so many efforts to become a big man okay It, even after losing his job okay so at least you can make certain efforts okay. to develop yourself to become a big a, somebody big in life and do not be do not worry about any problems any disadvantages any temporary uh, uh, what we call uh, setbacks that life is bound to give okay so uh, with this uh, i end my uh, lecture and i hand over the proceedings to uh, renuka ma'am uh, sir are there some other slides also that you wish to show yes yes uh, i'll just uh, take two more minutes two more minutes our uh, gains from this story yes see the uh, the story shows that we we are see uh, the bag we come we are gaining so much from this story that the path of life is not always smooth and we need to navigate the sudden twists and turns that life throws in our way we have to adapt ourselves to the changing circumstances and turn obstacles into opportunities yes that is the hallmark of an intelligent man see the verger was not he had practical knowledge he observed the things around him and <clears throat> chose the most proper path for him for himself okay so you have to also we all have to change uh, you know uh, adopt ourselves adapt ourselves to the changing circumstances okay we have to be flexible okay uh, we have to you know move uh, around move along with the times and yes there are certain idioms like making hand over fist like when he making money very rapidly in a quick and in a rapid manner uh, edward uh, albert edward forman so but to make money you have to take risks and that has been taken by uh, uh, by uh, the forman and sometimes adversity is bring out the best in man sometimes we feel that life has ended that now nothing more remains okay that <clears throat> we have nothing to now nothing more but then uh, we have to change this adversity into advantage so that that is the true test of a man so next sir so thank you so much for uh, for listening to me for this wonderful opportunity and uh, Yes, ma'am. Now we have. Uh, I have come to the end of my presentation. Uh, uh, thank you so much, sir, for this beautiful session. Thank you, ma'am. Till now, student friends. Till now, till yesterday, we had dealt with some serious topics, the topics pertaining very deep, contemplative thoughts and uh, themes. But today's subject. that we had learned the story by somerset mom the verger it is wonderful tale of a man albert edward forman a man with an indomitable spirit who is not ready to accept defeat in any circumstances and the story although it is very light and very beautiful one yet it drives home many good messages and morals to us today in the situation like pandemic we can learn that we have imbibed so many good qualities these adversities have taught us to be strong to be strong in our will in our spirit to imbibe good and healthy habits and to be accountable for our own work we students who are not able to join the physical classes they are now learning new things on the virtual platform so we are making best of this situation so the story is really so epic so key to our so near to our life and sir has rightly Uh, pointed out so many beautiful things like he has beautifully brought out the moral in the story the themes like appearance opportunity 
dedication and freedom of choice and execution. How it is important for anyone to have complete development of his personality. Any human being, in any organization, any institution, he cannot work if there is a uh, very close monitoring and very irritating voice over his head. But given a freedom of execution and choice, the person can do wonders. So this point has very beautifully brought out in his presentation. He has explained important terminologies uh, related to church, like uh, vestry, like altar, like aisle, etc. And that has really added to the existence detailed explanation of plot of the story is really I'm sorry for the disturbance. Detailed explanation of the plot of the story is given and summary is brought before our students in very insightful manner. The story of the virgin will truly imbibe the moral that life teaches us much more than what we learn through our formal education. The thing which is required to be successful is our common sense and soft skills along with our hard skills. So with these words, I once again thank you, Dr. Chakravarti. I thank the Chairman of Board of Studies uh, of Languages, uh, Science and Technologies, Archer Nagpur University, Nagpur, Dr. Kartik Panikar, sir, and his team for giving such a wonderful opportunity to us teachers, as well as providing this beautiful platform to the students to learn new things. And sir, we are really benefited. Students are really benefited. They are giving us feedbacks. I students, kindly subscribe the YouTube channel and press the bell icon so that you will get the notification of further lectures. And with these words, I take your leave. I thank the organizer and I request Panikar sir to kindly end this session. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Panish Chakrarti. It was a wonderful lecture. And I, uh, I do hope there is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the way you have explained, uh, there is a lot of life skills to take home from this lesson. You know, uh, we all are going to have the difficult phases, especially the students. Not to worry when you come across uh, even the biggest of problems. Uh, keep your composure and just see what uh, 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 way you can find out to get out of it. Thank you, Dr. Thank Manish. You. Thank you. Uh, Thank very you. well Thank dealt. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.